Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem subsets two. We did solve the first one of this and that was actually a long time ago and people have been requesting I solve this one as well. So let's do it today. The first one is actually very similar to this one. The only difference is that in this case, the input array that we're given can contain some duplicate values. Now our job is still the same. We want to return all possible subsets we can from this input array nums, but since we do have duplicate values, it's gonna be tricky for us to not have any duplicate subsets in our result. The good thing is we can return the solution in any order, so that's good. But let's take a look at an example. We have one, two, two. Now a subset of one, two, two is basically uh, some values from here where the order is preserved for the most part. So, you know, we could just take the value one, that's a subset. We could take the second value two, uh, that's a subset as well. We could take the third value by itself, which is also two, but here you can see we have a duplicate, right? These are both the same. We can't include both of them. So, you know, we don't include the second one. And by the way, even if we don't choose any of these, for example, if we just have an empty list, uh, that is still a valid subset, as you can see in the output over here. We could also take the first one and take the first two, which would give us one, two. We could take the first one and then take the second two, but that would be the exact same. That would be one, two as well. So we're not gonna keep both of them. So you're starting to get the idea of, you know, subsets in general and what the problem here is going to be for us to not include any duplicates in our result. When we don't include any duplicates, we have six different subsets that we can create. And before we actually get into the solution, you might be thinking, okay, maybe dynamic programming is something we can do. And that would be possible, but I know immediately by looking at this problem that we can't do dynamic programming. And the reason is because we're not really counting subsets or anything like that. We're actually creating the subsets. So even if we found some kind of shortcut, it wouldn't really make this any more efficient because we still have to create all of these subsets. And how many possible subsets could we have? Well, to generate a subset for each value, we can either choose to include this value or not include that value. So for each value, we have two choices. Now, how many values do we have in our input? Let's just call it n. So let's say two to the power of n is how many subsets we're going to have. Now, how long is each subset gonna be? Well, at most it could be of length n. So we're gonna take the number of subsets multiplied by the length of the subset. So this is going to be the overall time complexity to actually generate all of these subsets. Notice how we can figure this out even though we haven't even solved the problem yet. And this kind of hints to you how we are going to solve this problem. This is basically a brute force solution, right? So we're gonna be using backtracking. Okay, so let's get into it. So let's take a look at an example and let's just start with the first subset solution, which is actually pretty trivial for a backtracking problem. Remember, we wanna create every single possible subset. So for each one of these input values, we have a choice. Are we gonna include this one or are we not gonna include this one? So putting it more simply with a decision tree, you know, for the first decision we have, we're at this one, right? And we know that because we're gonna keep track of an index, a pointer, whatever you wanna call it. And it's initially gonna start at zero. Once we make our decision here, uh, then we're gonna shift it to the right and then make our decision over here and then keep doing that for every single value in the input. But so let's start with our first decision, which is the one. So let's say we do include that one, then we are gonna have a array of one. This is our subset so far. If we don't include the one, we're gonna have an empty list, which is still a valid subset, uh, but we're not done yet. We still have to iterate through the rest of the array. So next we're at the second decision, which is uh, two values. So for here, we could either add the two, and if we add the two, we'd have one, two, or we could not add the two. So we're basically skipping the two, which would leave us having a one. Same over here, we could add a two, which would be just two by itself in an array, uh, or we could skip the two, which would leave this being an empty list still. Okay, so we just finished this value. Now we're at the second two, and we're gonna continue this kind of naive approach, but now you're gonna see what the problem is. So for here, suppose we add this two, which would leave us having one, two, two. If we don't add the two, we stay as a one, two. And over here, you're gonna see where the problem is. So here we could add a two, which would give us a one, two. Two. You see that we have two subsets that are the exact same. Now, even though we're not finished with the array yet, 
Uh, both of these paths are clearly going to lead to the same subsets because they are the exact same and they, the remainder of the array is going to be the same for both of these. So we're going to end up with duplicate subsets. But the important question is how did this happen and how can we prevent this from happening? Let's take a look. So as we make this decision tree, for example, when we're over here and we're at the two value, we know that all subsets that follow this one, like as we go down the decision tree, all subsets are going to include at least one, one value, right? And the decision we're making is, okay, we're including this two. So if we do include the two, then we're saying all subsets that we create using this one are going to include at least one two value. So this path is supposed to be the path with all subsets that include at least one two. And we don't want duplicates. So when we make the decision on the right side where we skip this two value, we don't include the two value on this right side. So what this right side should represent is all possible subsets that don't include at least a single two. Basically all subsets that do not include any two values. Why? Because this left side over here already includes all subsets that have at least one two value. So if we include any two values on the right side, we're going to end up with duplicates. So what we have to do is not include any two values on this right side. How can we do that? Well, basically, when we were over here, that's what, what, what two we were deciding at, right? When we choose to skip this two, we should choose to skip all two. So instead of taking our eye pointer and just shifting it by one to be over here, we should actually shift it by two to be over here because that's how we know we're not going to get any more two values. But this input representation might make it look simple, but we're actually not guaranteed that the input array is going to be sorted. So so we have to sort it ourselves, which is going to be n log n time, but that's not a big deal because we already know that the time complexity of this solution is going to be about n times 2 to the power of n, so this is pretty insignificant. So now let's redraw this decision tree, keeping what I just mentioned in mind, and then we will eliminate all the duplicates. Okay, so this can actually stay the same because this is the side where we do include a two, but this is the side where we're skipping all the two values. So our pointer, when we're making a decision now, is not actually going to be over here. Our pointer is actually going to be over here at this three. So are we going to include a three or not? That's our choice. So if we do include a three, we get one three. If we don't include a three, we just get one. Okay, and what about this two? Well, we chose one two, so now the next decision is gonna be, are we including the second two or are we not including the second two? So we can draw that. So if we do include the second two, we get a two two. And if we don't include the second two, we just stay as a single two. And lastly, on the right side over here, are we actually going to be choosing from the second two? Well, no, because we already skipped the first two, and that means we're going to end up skipping the second two as well. So the decision we're making over here is actually going to be, are we including the three or are we not including the three? So that's going to be three by itself or just an empty uh, array. And so now you can see that this is actually uh, the last value that we were looking at. So we're not going to go any further down in this case. So just to kind of illustrate that, I'm going to put a box around here. This is the base case. We're not going to go any further. Same over here. This was also the base case because we were choosing from the three value. Here we included it. Here we did not include it. Okay, at this point, you probably get the idea, so I'm going to fast forward. So over here, we either include the three or we don't include the three, which will leave us with a one, two, two, three. Uh, the other one would be just one, two, two. And the other decision is just one, two, two. Over here, if we include the three, we get one, two, three. If we don't include the three, we just get a one, two. And then let's finish these two as well. So this would be two, two, three, or just a two, two, if we don't include the three. And then this one is going to be two, three, or just two by itself. So these are all of our uh, subsets that are going to be added to the result output. You can see that it's actually not quite 2 to the power of n. 2 to the power of n in this case would be 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. In this case, I think we actually have about 12 of them. And the reason is because we're eliminating duplicates, right? If we included the duplicates, it would have been 16. Uh, but that's why uh, the time complexity still is the same. We can still say the time complexity is n times 2 to the power of n. Because remember, this is the worst case. We don't actually know if there are going to be any duplicates in the input 
code or not. If there's not any duplicates, this is gonna be the upper bound. You know, if there are some duplicates, the actual time complexity might be a little bit smaller than this. But I think that's enough for us with this explanation. Now let's actually get into writing the code. Luckily, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now let's code it up and we're gonna declare our result. It's initially just gonna be an empty array. This is what we're gonna be adding all our subsets to. And remember, before we actually get into the backtracking portion, we wanna make sure that our input array is in sorted order. Okay, so now let's write the backtracking portion. We are given uh, two main inputs that we're gonna keep track of. One is the index that we're at in our nums array. And the second is what's the current subset uh, looking like so far. Uh, we're gonna have a single base case uh, and that's when we reach the end of the input array. So basically if i is equal to the length of the input array nums, uh, that's basically how we know we have gone through the entire array. That means we can take this subset that we have built and go ahead and append it to our result. But we want to make a copy of this subset because this subset is just going to be an array and we're going to be using this as we do our backtracking. So what we want to do is actually create a copy of this subset so that when we uh, have a future backtracking call that we don't end up overwriting this subset because we're taking a reference to this subset and appending it to this array. Uh, what we want to do is create a copy and we can do that in Python like this uh, or you can use like a built-in copy function in Java or whatever language you want. Uh, and after that, we just want to return because we don't want to continue backtracking when we reach the end of the array. Okay, that's the base case, but what is the recursive case? Well, remember we have exactly two decisions to make. One is all subsets that include nums of i, that include the number that we're at. The other case is all subsets that do not include nums of i, so we do not choose to include nums of i in our subset. Let's start with the first decision. What we're gonna do is we're gonna include uh, nums of i, right? So we're gonna take our subset and append to it this number, nums of i, and then simply enough, we're gonna go ahead and do our backtracking call, uh, passing in the next index. So we're gonna pass in uh, i plus one, and we're gonna pass in the subset that we have so far, and you know, that's gonna take care of all subsets that include this number, so very easy. But before we start generating all subsets that do not include that number, we should probably remove from the subset the value that we just added to it. We can do that just by saying subset pop, that'll pop this value that we just added. So now we're gonna generate all subsets that don't include nums of i, but this is the slightly tricky part because remember, if there are uh, duplicates, the duplicates will be right now next to each other because remember we sorted the input array. So what we want to say is uh, i plus one, as long as i plus one is in bound, so it's less than the length of the input array, and you'll see why we're doing this. And if nums of i is equal to nums of i plus one. So what am I doing here and why am I doing it? Well, remember if we have an input array like one, two, two, and we're at this value and we're choosing to skip this two, then we should probably skip the second two as well because we don't want duplicates, right? We should skip the second two and then our index i is gonna be over here, right? And we're gonna compare this value to this value. Are they equal? Yes, they are. So then we're gonna increment our pointer to be over here now. Then we're gonna compare this value with the next value, three. It's not equal. So uh, that's when we're gonna stop this loop. Right, and what this loop is gonna be doing is just gonna be incrementing the i pointer like I kind of talked about right now. Um, but what if we didn't actually have this three value here? Uh, in that case, our i pointer would be incremented to be this position and we'd see that i plus one is out of bounds. So then our loop would terminate as well. Okay, and after the loop does terminate, we still want to run our backtracking because even if we don't add any values, even if we skipped the entire array, you know, this is this case over here is going to be the case that ends up adding the empty array to the result. So we definitely don't wanna skip calling backtrack on this regardless of what the while loop ends up doing. So let's call our backtracking, uh, call, uh, pass in i plus one, same as we did up above, and let's pass in the current subset uh, after we have popped the value from it, remember. That is actually the entire code. As long as I don't have any bugs, let's run it to make sure that I don't. So first we wanna actually call our backtracking function. Let's pass in zero as the starting index and just pass in an empty array. 
as the initial subset. And then after that, we can just return the result. So now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does work and it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon if you'd like to further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.